Hi guys, welcome back to House of Blue. My name's Bear and this is episode 2 of Star Chats. So originally this episode was going to be all on moon magic and things to do with different phasing and different manifestation rituals, but I got a comment on the first Star Chats video that I was going to respond to and then it kept on getting more and more like an essay each time and I was like, I'm just going to make a video. Um, so I'll read it out for you. It says, by Oscar, one of the things I commonly hear when it comes to practicing magic like tarot reading, sigil magic and such is that there's no really, there's no really, there really is no wrong way of doing magic. Would you say this is true? Short answer. Yes, <laughs> there is a wrong way of doing magic. There's plenty of wrong ways to be doing magic. But the longer answer is it's complicated. So I'm going to try and break it down as best as I can and hopefully things make sense. So I guess the key word in this question is wrong. I mean, it depends what we're defining as wrong. We have dark magic and light magic. And I think a lot of people in the community and externally think that wrong magic or things that are wrong are dark magic like curses, potions, voodoo, but light magic, any of this, um, healing, divination, herbology, crystals, there are wrong ways to do this and there are wrong ways to do this. Dark and light magic is all neutral magic, it's just magic, period. Um, so you can be wrong and do things wrong in each of, in any element that you're doing. Um, and it doesn't even have to be you that does something wrong or something bad. If you're part of a coven and you've done a binding ritual or a blood ritual or any type of ceremonial magic on a new moon together that binds you automatically, your magic will be connected. So if someone else in your coven has messed up and messed with some dark spirits or mess with some dark magic, that can actually come back and affect you tenfold as well. It'll affect everyone in the group. Um, which is why there are rites of passages in authentic covens and there are a lot of things you have to go through and sign to make sure you're not going to engage in anything that you don't understand that'll have negative influences for everyone around you. Um, I guess it breaks down to, if, if we're thinking about what can go wrong, it breaks down to what happens in magic. There's two things. There's your intention and your intuition. Now, your intuition is very different from, say, like your instincts. I think people get confused between the two. Not everyone is born with the intuition. It's something that you have to, it's like a radio frequency. Everyone is born with the ability to get to that frequency, um, but not everyone's built in with it. Because like instincts, if anything like triggers or happens to you, or like reflexes, you get hit in the knee, you've got a kick reflex, um, you are somehow um, at a zoo, an animal or tiger looks at you funny, you kind of like start to panic a bit. They're all your reflexes. But your intuition is, I've drawn it out like a radio frequency. If we think about the whole human race, the majority of people, I would say 95% occupy, occupy, <laughs> occupy these levels of frequencies. And they're actually a lot closer together. So the higher you get on the frequency level, the more spaced out it is, okay? It's an infinite level of frequencies. No humans make it past a point. There's a certain point where we just aren't built to tune into that frequency. Um, but you'll notice every time you're ready to kind of level up or every time you're ready to switch to a different frequency, you'll often go through a low patch and it'll be really, really low because, you know, if even if... In science, you think of a plane, you think of the plane going up for turbulence. The higher you go, you go through the clouds, you shake a bit. So, you go low, 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 and then you shoot up higher when you get to another level. Then you go low and high and low and high and circle and such is the circle of life. 
Okay, so the reason why I'm kind of like bumbling on a lot about intuition is because your intention or what you want to get out of your magic, the spells or the potions or anything you want to manifest, anything that you're doing, you have to have reached a certain frequency before you can actually get it to work. That's why we're talking about it. They work hand in hand. It's this plus this. Okay? So your intention your intention is a declaration of intent, um, a purpose. It can be just thoughts. It doesn't have to be verbal. Any anyone can do magic or prayer. So to do it wrong, and this is probably like in the comment, can you do sigils wrong, for example? Yes. If someone has done a personalized sigil, which I've done here, I've made this one, and I've said that it means I will be productive today. If you don't know me, and you don't know what intention I have for this, the full intention, what I've compromised, because magic is give and take, what I've given in order to get that back, and you use it, that's doing magic the wrong way because you don't know what you've invited into your sphere or what you've invited into your frequency. There are lots and lots of pagans, neo-pagans, Wiccans, witches online that draw sigils with clear intent for everyone. So find those people, don't, and it comes back down to doing your research. Don't just find something on the, in, on the internet that has no connotation, nothing attached to it, you don't know where it's come from, that's when you start doing magic wrong is when you find things and you're just like, I don't know where this come home, come from, but it looks cool. I'm just going to take it in and it'll work out for me. Um, because that can be dangerous. Um, so yeah, you don't know what my intentions for this are, you don't know what I've sacrificed, you don't know what I've exchanged for this, so do your research. What happens if you do use magic incorrectly? How does it rebound? How does it affect you? The easiest way to phrase it is that the universe or space, time, whatever you want to call it, responds in numbers and frequencies and equations. It's all numerological. That's the universal language. So if we think about an equation, and I've just taken this equation, um, this isn't like a equation for manifesting, but for example, you've got m v m square root 1 minus v over c 2, okay, squared. Um, let's say that that is the equation for manifestation. If your intention and intuition are both wrong, and you end up projecting out an equation, that's a theta rune over square root spiral minus coffee is six, like random nonsense, the universe is confused and will not action anything. So you've done something wrong, but there's been no repercussion from it. So you, you're safe, no harm done. However, the danger happens when you get part of it right. If you get the intention right and the intuition wrong, or the in intuition right and the intention wrong, this is what can happen. So we've got part of the equation right, and then we've got the Googly gook, in which one is rejected and the other, one is received and the other rejected. If the intention is correct, the universe will give you what you ask for, but not how you ask for it. So if you've said, I want this to happen and this is what I want, and you've made it clear, and that's being received as part of the equation, but like I said before, you're not at the right frequency to ask that. The universe will give it to you, but it'll often appear and you'll often miss it because it's not in the way that you thought you manifested it. If your intuition is correct and your intention is wrong, you weren't clear with what you wanted, but this part was received. The universe will send energy beings to clarify whether you want a positive response or a negative response, and this is when you start to delve into spirits. Spirits will come find you, or you'll be shown signs. Um, the universe will try and communicate with you via extraterrestrial so that it can figure out what you want. Because you're at a place where you can ask for it, it's just like, hey, like, what do you want from this? <laughs> Please specify. <laughs> um, because you're at a level to do so. So, fun question that I thought 
I might get asked. Have I ever done magic the wrong way? Yes. So many times. Short answer, yes. I have messed up royally on several occasions in which the backlash was so great that it took me months to recover from it. Um, but in saying that, there are many times where I've been able to participate in collaborative spells that have worked wonders and I've been able to do magic by myself that has worked wonders and I've been able to receive those gifts. So that's nice. <laughs> but I would say more often than not it's about a 50-50 success rate. Most of the time my intuition is okay and my intention is wrong because I'll ask for something and the universe will be like, that's a bit selfish, don't you think? <laughs> We're not going to give you that. Um, so try not to be selfish with your intentions because the universe won't give them to you. Um, so last point, how to avoid doing magic wrong. How can you avoid all of this in the equations? Reading, research, meditation, podcasts, self-reflection, inner work, start at the beginning, big point, start at the beginning, which is reading and research, which sounds boring. It sounds like, you know, it's not as fun as a lot of the stuff, but we know that if your intuition isn't at the level that it's meant to be, you're not going to be getting what you're asking for anyway. So it's worth putting in the years that it takes to do all the research. Don't skip sets. Don't go from reading green witchery and herbology to voodoo just straight off the bat and start doing, you know, pins and stuff. It, <laughs> I, I worry for your safety. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Um, ask for help. Find someone who's more experienced than you. Not someone or someone that you feel comfortable asking as well. Someone you feel comfortable saying, I might have tried this and I might have invited this and it's not worked out the way I want it to be. That way you can get help. Um, if you want to join a coven, there's nothing against joining a coven. Um, a lot of people have connected based magic and actually need people, like my mum. So I come from a maternal witch bloodline and my mum and my grandmother and my great grandmother all connected witches needed covens and other witches around them constantly to rebound energy for their magic to actually work. Um, so that comes through self-reflection meditation, finding out what type of magic you have. Um, if you want, if you are a connected witch and you want to break out of it, you just have to get to a higher frequency. You can do it. Um, and don't be selfish with your magic, which I've already covered. So for me personally, I had my first initiation when I was initiation when I was six. So that's when a lot of my intuition started kicking up. And I started going through the frequencies because I was getting approached by a lot of spirits. A lot of spirits as a kid, always seeing the dead. Um, second initiation, I was thirteen, and I didn't join a coven, but I spent a lot of time around my grandmother's coven. And that's when I did a lot of study. I read a lot of books. We did tarot every Saturday. Um, and it was a really good time. And then my third initiation, when I was 20, um, that happened. And now I'm getting better and I'm going to spend the rest of my life, I guess learning out how to balance intention and intuition so that I can get better and I can lower my 50-50 fail ratio <laughs> um, and start doing magic more selflessly and for the greater good because that's what it's for. <laughs> yes. Um, I hope that made sense. Um, any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer all of them. Um, and not write essays, because I tend to go off on tangents, as we've just seen. Um, I would say to someone who's right at the beginning, there is a website called Sacred Text. If you Google anything you want and then add Sacred Text to the end, you will find a lot of content. 
Scribd, Reading, a lot of bookshops, Bookface, QBD, they all have Wicca books as well. So get to reading and there's a lot of free content online as well. Exciting!